I've got Graham Dretch to thank for this idea since he shared with me a file in which he'd set up a kaleidoscope in Bryce and I thought I would have a go at that. So here's the empty scene and uh, there's my camera and an infinite plane and for this I'm going to click on the 2D picture object here and then an empty square and I'm going to use uh, one of the images from the abstract wallpapers product of Horrows and myself but uh, any image you want will do I just thought I'd use that and check out of there the reason for doing it that way is because by using the, the picture the little man shape it brings it in at the aspect ratio that the file was saved rather than if I'd used a 2D face it would have just uh, changed it to fit so that's that I'm going to modify the material now because I'm going to use ambience and diffuse to show make this material show up and for that I'm going to set the global ambience up to fully white turn the atmosphere off and set it to black and I'm going to go into the Skylab and I'm going to turn the sun shadows off so that the diffuse light can get in there and there won't be any shadows so it'll increase the efficiency of the render so I'll just check out of that now and you can see that it's quite glowy already now if, to, set, to make the mirrors I'm going to modify the infinite plane the material on the infinite plane I'm just going to make reflective for the moment we'll just leave it at 100% reflection and then I'll, I'll just show you how that looks you can see now it's reflecting the pattern I'll, I'll enlarge the pattern a bit now render it again now to fill in the rest of the mirror elements copy and paste go to the attributes of the one you've just generated and set, put in 60 degrees in the Z direction and because my camera is facing north that's an appropriate choice so that's another element there and then I'll need a third element so Control C Control V go into the attributes and change that to minus 60 there you go so I arrange those elements so that the camera is looking down inside and uh, that gives me my kaleidoscope effect the pattern's looking a bit uniform at the moment and a bit flat. Usually with a kaleidoscope you, you've got light shining through from the back. So I can uh, create a bit of that illusion by going to the 2D face here, going into the material lab and going into the texture source edu editor and I'll copy and paste and produce an alpha map so that the, I can enhance the brightness of the bright colours. Um, now I've got an alpha map, i would turn transparency off because that's not really necessary for this. I'm just going to use a diffuse channel to make it brighter. So now that that will uh, act, that's actually made it darker because I've not turned the sun up yet, but now it's given more of a, a higher contrast range to the colours and this will be particularly evident when I turn the diffuse value for the sun up. I can render in scene here and now some parts will become very bright like this light behind it and the other thing about a kaleidoscope at least in the real world is that mirrors aren't perfect so if I select the infinite planes that are my kaleidoscope elements uh, mirror elements go into the material lab and I can cut the reflection down I'll try 65 so it's not a perfect reflector and so then it uh, it gets darker towards the outside edge so there's a glowing center and darker on the outside now something to be aware of here is that uh, the if we just uh, widen the field of view the number of reflections I can't really see it because I've uh, attenuated it so much but the number of reflections is determined by the rays per pixel so not rays per pixel what I'm talking about the maximum ray depth that's better so if you give it a higher ra maximum ray depth then the pattern will continue further I'm gonna have to turn the reflection back up to 100 to show you that so there you go now you can see on the preview because it doesn't use the uh, the maximum ray depth for its previewing that it only shows to a certain depth there even though we're on accurate rendering on fast preview it uses even smaller maximum ray depth but uh, the result on the pattern here is it's very uniform as you can see because of the reflection setting so I'm going to set that back down again I'll try a bit higher setting for the reflection and then lower the rays per, uh, rays per pixel, I keep saying that because I've been doing those trambient renders, maximum ray depth, all that does relate, and narrow the field of view. So narrow the field of view. Uh, so I want this to be uh, an efficient render because I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and do a, a brief 
animation from this. So uh, I'm going to change the document setup to one to one. So I've got a square aspect, and then right animation's tricky. See if I can remember now. There's a menu here that you open for animation, and then you put in your keyframe. Right. So I think I need the object. I want a keyframe selected. So keyframe. I might not be right about this. I don't do much animation. Then I drag the scrub time over till I've got eight seconds of animation and then I'll edit this. Now if I move this or rotate it it's going to uh, record this I think. So one, two, that's a full rotation almost and I'll just tweak it so that it's within a degree of full rotation and then add that to the keyframe and then that should give me so I'm using the, the, the line here dragging it across that's like previewing it so I should get a variety of let's see different renders from this of course moving it or, or rotating it because of the it's just the position of the mirrors and that's going to determine what pattern we get so to render an animation I think I've got to go file render animation there then it's going to put it somewhere obscure so if I set file location I can give it the desktop location of course animation right and it's going to be the entire duration which is eight seconds so I'll just check that and it should get going right it's oh, not using all the processing power so presumably this isn't one that's been optimized for uh, multi-core processing or uh, hyper threading and it says it's going to take oh, about 24 minutes so I'll pause the video here and we'll come back to it when it's done and uh, see what it's like well, um, I went away from it because it seemed to be taking longer than it had predicted and, well, I guess that's down to the fact it wasn't using all the processor cores so I think it must have taken about uh, an hour, all told and I judge by the fact that the Windows Media Player has popped up that it must have played it once through so let's uh, play it again and see what it's like hmm. well, not very smooth through Windows Media Player and it's working the hard disk uh, well, I can hear it chuntering away in the background I don't know whether you can hear that. Let's see. Well, if I set it to repeat on, maybe it'll do it more efficiently and I've got it uh, cached in some way and then it'll run a bit smoother. So let's see if that helps. So this is run through one. And then if it repeats, maybe it'll come through and, and run smoothly. Uh, no. In fact, I'm going to let you have a listen to the hard drive. Let's see if it picks up on the microphone. Well, I'll find out, uh, find out when I play this back whether or not that worked, but uh, you can see it's, it's pretty clunky, so I think what I'll do is I'll see if I can feed this into Camtasia and if it'll run any smoother, so uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just stop the video here and see what I can do with it. Okay, so this is uh, Camtasia Studio. Here's the video that uh, Bryce produced, and I'm going to drop it in and put, put uh, three blocks together, so what, they're eight seconds long, so that's about 25 seconds of... Uh, animation. In the previewing um, it's still pretty clunky but I won't know what's happened to this until I compile the video which usually takes, I don't know, 10-15 minutes, anything up to half an hour. Um, yeah, we've just explained. I didn't know how to spell kaleidoscope. I think I've since discovered the correct spelling of the kaleidoscope. I can't even say it now. In the title. I think that's how it's supposed to be spelt anyway. Uh, all these other things, in case you're curious, those are the zoom keyframes and you can put in captions. I really like this software. It does occasionally crash though, which makes me like it less. I suppose you should update to the later version. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked now. So that's the plan. I suppose then that this really is the end of the tutorial, even though I don't know what the result of compiling those will be, whether it'll come out smoother or whether it'll de degrade it too much by the video compression. You'll just have to wait and see. So, there you go. I hope that was uh, interesting, and you can uh, now have a go at making your own kaleidoscopic images.